Before I start on that, I want to say thank you very much for evaluating projects like this to ensure that uh, the community of Pots, Lower Potts Grove gets what it needs uh, in its community and taking care of all the, all the residents. Um, what I have before you is some information that we've gathered over the last couple months on actual enrollments <coughs> from some of the communities in our district. Uh, not all of them are in Lower Potts Grove, but a couple are. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this to your attention is because the numbers I have seen from the uh, Sanitary Green developers uh, are much lower on a uh, student per household uh, ratio. So if I could just review what I have here for you so that you can uh, understand my, my data. Uh, I have on the left hand side four uh, existing developments, Coddington View, Turnberry Farms, Walnut Ridge and Rolling Hills, uh, as well as the uh, Sanitoga Green uh, information that was presented earlier this year. <clears throat> and you can see the number of homes in each of the communities and the number of students that are currently uh, attending Potts Grove School District from those developments. And in the green uh, bar, you see the number of students per household. Uh, and you can see that Senatoka Green's numbers are approximately half of the lowest other community of those four uh, that I present to you. Uh, those four, Coddington View is the lowest uh, with 0.23 students per household, and the highest is Rolling Hills with 1.03 students per household. In the blue column adjacent to that would be the number of students that would be driven out from the Sanitoga Green project if the ratio for the Coddington View or Turnberry Farms or whatever uh, was the actual number of students. We realize that enrollment projections are just that, they're guesses. They're educated guesses, <coughs> but they're guesses. These are hard numbers from these, from these developments right here. So if for some reason, it would come in at the high end, uh, at the level of uh, students that Rolling Hills is driving out. Uh, the Sanitoga Green property could, could spawn off 516 students for the Potts Grove School District. To put that in perspective, that's bigger than West Potts Grove, it's bigger than Lower uh, Ringing Rocks, and it's approaching Lower Potts Grove Elementary School size in, in population. Uh, at the bottom, you can see what our current enrollment is uh, by building. And I also <laughs> indicate that both Ringing Rocks and Lower Potts Grove are at or near capacity. So if the developer's numbers come to fruition, we'd be picking up approximately four additional kids per grade level, assuming it's spread evenly across all grades. We know that's not going to be the case, but making that assumption, about four kids per, per grade level, be no problem as, uh, consuming those, absorbing those in our current program. But if you go to the other, some of the other scenarios, um, it would have some significant staffing and facility impact on the district. And uh, I'm asking you to, to take a look at these numbers as, as you're hearing the presentations and uh, try and take them into consideration in whatever way you can, uh, because it may not be as rosy a picture as been, has been presented up until this point in time. Switching gears, um, also I heard rumors, I'm not sure if it's true, so please just tell me I'm wrong if I'm wrong, but that the commercial portion of the development may not come on at the beginning, and I would encourage you to to really try and push for that to happen because without that com commercial component, it's just a big housing project. And I think we all think the, the commercial, uh, commercial tax base would help the township and the school district significantly. So thank you very much. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have on the information. If you don't have them now. Uh, hey, what formula do you use? Because they have a specific formula that they use to Rutgers University. Which is These a nationally are, accepted formula to calculate these, the amount of school children that are generated. This one, uh, this one. These are based on actual numbers. Actual numbers, okay. I have a question if I can ask. Go ahead. 
Uh, I, first off, thanks for bringing this to our attention. I appreciate having this um, much information about the uh, school district. And I, my question is about the types of residential structures. Cutting to view and Turnberry farms are basically single family dwellings. Is, would that be? Cottington View or townhouse dwellings. Okay, all right, that's what I want yeah, to do. Turnberry clear. Farms is, is single family. Uh, Walnut Ridge and Rolling Hills, I assume you would consider them both townhouses. Sure, okay. I just wondered if, in, in your experience, if there was much difference in the way that uh, <coughs> families or the number of students coming out of a family differ in single family dwellings than they do in apartments and, and townhouses? Off the top of my head, I don't have that okay. information. Uh, that being no said, we, we are going to be contracting for an enrollment study that would take into the <coughs> consideration this project and the other projects plus uh, just general enrollment trends in the area. Uh, but we don't have that. We're going to have approve, hopefully approve that at our next meeting and then start the process. So that'll probably be a couple, three months in the process until we get the actual data. Um, but that, that, that would provide an independent uh, set of eyes on the, on the information as well. Um, I can't project enrollment. That's not my expertise. This is just what we know we have in these communities. Oh, that's good. Thanks. Dave, your enrollment is projected. Are you using Montgomery County Planning Commission? We haven't uh, <laughs> set a contract yet. That's one option. We also, uh, in the past, have used a, a company. Uh, they changed their name now to Future Link. They're from uh, Ohio. They did our uh, enrollment projections for Rain and Rice. Okay. So we're trying to decide which one of those two. I know they just recently did one for Perkin Valley. Yeah, they, they've done a number. They've gotten into the business. They do a pretty nice job. So, <coughs> yeah, it's kind of absolutely. Thank you. So, what made you choose these four developments? I thought they were similar in nature to what we have. We don't have a lot of apartment complexes, but we do have a number of townhouse communities. Is Turnberry Farms townhouse? No, that's that's single family. That's okay. single. Family. So we can eliminate that off the list probably because it's not really anything like it. Coddington View is probably the newest of. The townhomes in our in our community, correct? Correct. So it probably would be closest if we're going to compare townhomes, um, and probably uh, Coddington View is probably, and I'm guessing, uh, most most of those are homeowner <coughs> occupied. They started out as homeowner occupied. My understanding is there's a number that are rental units at this point. Okay. I, I don't think they're held out by the developer as rental units, but. Okay. I don't know the I don't know the percentage. All right. And Walnut Ridge and Rolling Hills. Well, Rolling Hills is all rent, I believe, and Walnut Ridge is probably going the same way, where they rent. Uh, I guess there's a gro a trend in that direction, but my understanding was when Walnut Ridge was built, it was owner occupied. Right. So, if we take a long long term perspective look at things. Uh, you know, there's no guarantee that this development doesn't turn into something comparable. Okay. And Walnut Ridge and Rolling Hills have been here for how long? 70s. 70s. 72, 73. So 50 years, 46 years, and the trend's starting to turn over. My, 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 and Coddington View is probably, what, 20 years old now? No, it just got dedicated. Uh, yeah. When did they start still, building it? still finishing up development. It's been a while. It was a THP project and the bubble went first in 08 and someone picked it up. Okay. Um, so I'm not sure what we're comparing, and believe me, I would love to see the stats from the Planning Commission from other areas, but I don't know that what we're comparing really compares to what uh, this developer has proposed, because this developer certainly has proposed something different than I think those communities. Now, can we say that in 46 years, they may be those communities, then, you know, I'd like to have that crystal ball. As a matter of fact, I'd like to have it for tomorrow. But, um, but I don't know that, you know, first of all, the, 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 the one that disturbs me the most is the 516 students, um, unless we're predicting a baby boom, I don't know that 
we're going to get 516 students out of 500. I, I don't know where that math comes from. That so, math comes from the number of students at per household at, Ro at Rolling Hills times the number of units proposed to be built in uh, San Antonio Green. I'm just, all I'm doing is taking the, in, the, help, the unit, the members, the students per household in the four other developments and multiplying by the number of, the, number of units at the household. I'm not interpreting, I'm not stressing, I'm saying here's some additional information, this could happen, their information could happen, I just think we need to take all, all possibilities in, into consideration when you're making a decision of this magnitude. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Yes. If, what, and if you have any idea, has the enrollment trend been basically in the district over the last couple of years? We've been slightly increasing, slightly. Not, not significant, um, and we, we haven't been for a number of years. Uh, I, every, every September when I'm getting kindergarten enrollments, I, I kind of hope that an extra 50 kids don't show up uh, because I don't know where I put them. Uh, but bottom line is that over the last 20 years with a lot of development in the district, uh, we haven't had significant enrollment growth. Um, but the makeup of our community is changing. Um, I can tell you that our free and reduced lunch uh, percentage is much higher than it was 10 years ago. Um, and as a result of that, I think there's, there's becoming a, a more and more student per household <coughs> possibility. Um, but it ha at this point in time, we haven't had any significant uh, housing additions in the last seven or eight years either. So, so we've, been, we've been just covering around 3,100, 3,200 kids. Thanks. Mm -hmm. the, the high school, so the current building enrollment's 1,028. Mm -hmm. We just, I mean, that was just renovated. What's the capacity there? When we uh, renovated, we were uh, trying to serve 1,200 kids. So we do have a little bit of uh, capacity in that building. Um, our, our, probably our biggest pressure points, quite frankly, are the two building, two el the elementary buildings in <coughs> Lower Potts Grove. Right? Mr. Master, I have a question for you. So w w we said that based on San Antonio Green estimates, they would be adding four students. That probably per grade level, right? right. And that could be absorbed. Right. So. Give us a feel for like what then becomes an issue. Is it the nine? Is it the nine <coughs> additional? Is it ten? Is it twenty? I mean, is there a pressure point that if we say, you know, uh, again, we like double I, that number to eight, is that like I said, a right, problem? Right now, our elementary schools are ringing rocks and lower our, our at or near capacity. And what mm -hmm. I'm saying there is, our, we we set estimated class size or projected class sizes, and we try and keep them around 25. Mm -hmm. Okay, a little lower for the younger kids, a little higher for the older kids, but right, right around 25. Mm -hmm. So if we have 25 kids, approximately how many classes per grade? Uh, we have approximately 250 kids per per, per grade level. So, okay. so there'd be about 10 classes. Okay. Okay. So, um, if you if you spread nine out, that'd be adding one. Right. Okay. But if we're already at or above that that target, that might still add one classroom per grade level. Okay. okay? Um, the 40, if that happened, and that's a worst case scenario, granted, if the 40 happened, that's a minimum of two additional classes uh, per grade level, uh, which would require substantial additional facility costs as well. Um, the 24, 27, if those were the accurate numbers and they came through, that would probably be somewhere in the middle, maybe a one, one and a half per grade level that we'd have to look at adding. Okay. Thank you. Is this also assuming um, that 100% of the occupancy is going to public schools? No. This is, all I'm comparing is the number of kids from these four communities that come to Potts Grove School District 
as compared to the number of houses in those communities. Um, do, do we know what the percentage is of children that are in the district right now that go to public school and, and those that go to private? I don't, I don't have that information with me tonight. Any other questions? Uh, what's our total enrollment for everything for the whole township, for all the schools we know? Our overall, we're about 3250 right now. 3250. I'd like to thank you for bringing us to our attention. I've never seen this scale before, so this gives us something to look at and think about. Thank so you very much. Thank you.